All right, how we doing, Sloan? We are doing great, Pat. It's uh, Monday, um, episode five of the Palhanna podcast. Um, we sure about that? We never quite get the number right, but you no, know. it is five. It is. I said five last time, but it is. Yeah. It is five. Okay. It, it also yeah. reminds me because yesterday it was Cinco de Mayo, and oh, there um, we go. So yeah, we're we're, we're trying to align in. with uh, key holidays of the year. Yes. Um. Yeah. Sort of the uh, hot topic right now. We wanted to touch on very timely. Emergency on, press uh, conference on Friday. Yeah, our uh, mayor Biston held a press conference announcing the phase out of short term rentals in the apartment district. Um, we've been fielding a lot of calls with our clients. Um, trying to figure out next steps. What does this mean? What's going to happen? Um, and yeah, we wanted to put out a video on it to just address where things are at currently and kind of what to expect. Obviously, it's still pretty early. Hard, hard to know much. Um, nothing's happening until what is it? Is it June twenty fifth? Yeah, it's the, it's the end of June. There, uh, I guess it's the first round of like a hearing or is it uh, at the at planning, planning already or planning yeah. commission testimony yeah yeah there we go so june 25th key date will be the first moment for testimony where owners of vacation rentals and or members of the community can give their thoughts on this topic um it's going to be a long meeting <laughs> yeah i anticipate we, uh, it being uh pretty Pretty uh, pretty wild down there at the, yeah. at the county building. That, that, that hours day. and yeah. hours and hours of testimony. Um, Do they have to hear it all? They have to, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Everyone that wants to testify, they have to. They have to listen. Um, we assume there's going to be a lot of legal counsel there um, testifying, and um, obviously the uh, you know the planning commission has their counsel as well, but. Um, that's neither here nor there. Thoughts on the topic. We just wanted to kind of look at it, obviously, from both sides. You know, our um, our county council has had a mission to try and find housing where they can for a while. This is not a new idea. You know, it's something that's been talked about for quite a long time. Um, we, uh, I guess we should start with what what this even means, right? Where did this come from? Um, so if you don't know or you're not aware, so in Maui County, the short, the ability to short-term rent your property comes from one of two things, either, well, I guess there's a couple other, but it, it's really two main things. Hotel zoning, you know, if you are a hotel zone property, you can vacation rent by the night, no questions asked. That's what it was designed for. Then we have this whole group of properties, which is, you know, a lot of our condo inventory was built prior to 1989. Um, and in that time, apartment zoning allowed for vacation rental use. So it was in the zoning code when they built them that you could do this at the time they were built. So naturally, you know, it, it's the highest and best use. Well, it was at the time, right? You know, definitely the most profitable. So a lot of those complexes ended up going that direction. Um, after that, they changed the apartment zoning allowances to not allow vacation rentals. So something built after that period, time period in the apartment district could not be short-term rented, right? Had to be residential. Smart move as the need for housing grew. Um, then they came up with what's called the Minotoya Opinion. Um, this list of properties includes all of those that were built in that, you know, pre-1989 period that were what they call grandfathered vacation rentals. They're being used in that way prior to that date. And they said, okay, we're going to take these, we're going to allow the use in perpetuity. Okay. And this, so this happened a long time ago. Then, and I, I, I was trying to look back and see what it was. I think about five years ago, give or take, four or five years ago, maybe six, the county council voted that into law so that 
you know, basically that became part of the zoning code. That list of exempted properties is legally short term rentable. It's in the zoning code. So now what they're talking about is taking every, you know, every one of those grandfathered apartment district buildings and converting them back to long term rentals. Okay. Sounds like a noble idea in theory, right? Yes. I mean, the idea, you know. the, the idea and premise of and the why behind the law that the or the the proposed legislation is good. Right. It is to provide housing for people that live here. Yeah. It just no, it just seems no one would argue that we don't need more housing here, right? Right. Right. Yeah. And you know, vacation rentals have been a hot topic, you know, for ever since I've lived here. You know, hundred percent. Oh yeah. Yeah. And yeah, absolutely. With with the fire in Lahaina in August, it just seems like this was kind of always going to happen, right? Yeah, it just, yeah. It I mean, felt they're, like they're, that, that it was headed that direction ever since. You know, the the already the tight inventory of long term housing for residents. It, it was yeah. already really really tight, and it then, was already bad. Yeah. Yes, and then August eighth. Um. Yeah. Now it's it's magnified quite a bit. So Way something so, something was going to get done, and yeah, this is just you know the first domino to fall, and um, yeah, sh should be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, obviously, we've we've been having a lot of conversations. Everyone, everyone that owns a vacation rental wants to know what's happening. You know, everyone looking at purchasing vacation rentals wants to know what's happening. Um. So, you know, I, I mean, really, there's no certainty until we start going through the process, right? No one's going to know anything. Um, and that first planning commission meeting, June 25th, um, will be the first moment that we have any sort of idea of how things are going to progress, how how it's being received, right? How is, how is it going to get voted? Because basically, it's going to go Maui Planning Commission, the outer islands have to have their planning commissions review, Lanai and Molokai. Then we go to the county council for vote. That's another round of testimony. So there's going to be public testimony at both levels. Um, so needless to say, there is a process. The date they're trying to have this go into effect by is July 1st, 2025. So midsummer of next year for West Maui. And January 1st, 26, so about six months later, for the rest of the island. Okay, so that's their target dates. Um, I think they're hoping to have this le legislation period and voting done by the end of this year. Seems to be the goal. It's funny how it aligns with the general election, wouldn't you say? Yeah, so? yeah election season is here, and this is just another another thing that I think could swing the the vote one way or the other, probably, right? It, it could yeah. have a big effect on whether this legislation gets passed or not. Yeah. One might assume that this might be some political posturing to gain some support. <laughs> I don't know, though. I don't know. I'm just a guy. I don't know. Not not a conspiracy theorist, but just, you know, no. point, yeah. pointing out the facts, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, and then I think it's important to look at, right, What what does this mean, you know, if this were to happen, how would this play out, right? And we, obviously, being in the business, we know the inner workings of these types of properties. Um, and if you really look at it, it's just hard to grasp how these could possibly be used as affordable rentals or ownership. I mean, I, I know. You know the, 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 rentals, that's, right? it's, that's like, a good it point. It could be, you know, to buy, right? To buy in and live there. But it just doesn't make any sense. You look at the operating costs on these things, and it, all the vacation rental owners know this. You know, between your maintenance fees, upkeep, now insurance costs are skyrocketing. Um, I just don't know how anything is going to be anywhere near affordable in these properties for people to either buy or rent. You know, if we have an owner that is forced to switch to long term rental, right? They're going to look at their expenses and for your average vacation rental and even on the lower end, right? Let's say something, what's entry level for those right now? Maybe seven, 700 grand. Yeah. For one bed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, 
you know, they're going to have to rent that one bed for five grand a month to even get close to covering any of their expenses or they're losing money every month. Yep. Now, a $5,000 one bedroom unit to me does not seem like a viable, affordable solution for a local, you know, work, member of the community or family or whatever, right? These are one bed, one bath. We also have to apply that to, you know, what the market conditions are going to be like at that time. There's going to be so much inventory. It's yeah. just going to be so much like a, a huge influx of inventory to hit the rental market at one time. Yeah. And, it, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, it's hard to predict, but it, it just seems like that the prices will just have to go drastically down, which is going to affect these owners' ability to cover their costs, kind of like what you just said earlier. It just yeah. seems like that's the well, only it, way it, it can go, right? That, that's part of the end goal, right? If they devalue, then they theoretically could become affordable, right? Yep, yep. But... You know, it, it's it's hard to see it panning out that way. Um, you know, I think a good point a client of mine made is you look at this, um, you know, it's obviously it's a noble idea in theory, but what what you're going to cause to happen. And let's not this. I mean, God, we have so many points we got to make. But yeah, yeah, when, you know, if you have, you know, a lot of a lot of investment property owners are pretty financially stable, right? Um, they're going to put it out there for rent at a price at a number that makes sense for the property for their expenses, and they're going to leave it at that. It's going to sit at that number, and either it gets rented or it doesn't, and it's got, not going to be anywhere near affordable. Right. Um. So you're going to have all these high-priced rentals out there available in the market, with no families moving into them because they can't afford it, and it's not affordable. Right. And you're in this catch 22 phase, right? It, it's, it's, it's just, it's not, it, it's not going to be feasible. Um, not to mention the fact that we're giving up, you know, a massive portion of our annual budget to do this, right? The right. revenue from the short term of the TA tax GE yep. um, is about, 20 to 25 percent of Maui's entire budget you know so they're estimating a loss and this is this is the county council's um inside council giving this number but they're saying 30 million dollars in lost revenue a year um realistically i think it's more like 40 to 50 um when you look at revenue numbers so they're they're giving that's up if, a that's, huge if, that's if that's if that's if they get the the lion's share of these seven thousand units flipped over to no longer allowing yeah. short term. Yeah, so that's taking the the short term rentals. They're trying to convert to long term out of that short term rental arena, right? Um, so you know you're giving up revenue on one side, and and you know the financial the the numbers just don't work as affordable. I mean, it's the operating costs we know on these things are just crazy. Yeah. I know. Um, now with insurance going up, I mean, most of your average maintenance fee today is fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah. Easy on anything, you know. And this is all this is in the inventory that's sub a million, you know. Um, so it's just it, it it's it's a great idea, but when you look at the numbers, we just don't see how it how it works. Um, to actually generate the affordable housing we need. You know, maybe it'll generate unaffordable housing. Well, so a part of what he was saying was that it was originally for workforce housing to begin with. So maybe that they're, maybe they have some plan to, to identify certain complexes or certain, you know, you know, micro markets of communities and just try and, and target those first. Well, and, you think, yeah, that, that would I mean, actually that, be logical. Yeah. Just, I mean, I, I think across the board, like you have, you know, let's say the Palms at Wailea, right? Yeah. Or at Wailea Kolu. Do you see that ever being affordable in the middle <laughs> it just, of Wailea? I mean, it, I mean it, they're, they're, those are resort-like properties. Yeah. It, it just yeah. doesn't seem like that's designed yeah. to be affordable housing. I mean, it, yeah. And don't get me wrong. I mean, I think there are, there's definitely complexes on this island that should be converted. 
let's not let's i guess we're straying away from that you know yeah, yeah, yeah. there's definitely there's certain properties where this might make sense it's definitely gonna be at the lower end the lower price points yeah. but you know with the cost of those properties how they were built how they were designed yes absolutely some of the complexes that are vacation rentals now were designed designed for like public housing they got the puds or you know definitely for long-term housing um and then just due to the nature of our economy they you know they were designed for that and they slowly got taken over by vacation rentals because it you know generates more income right yeah. um so i think there's definitely certain complexes where this makes a lot of sense and and will work but a vast majority of them it will not work they um, they, they gotta like make it so that it's that it is affordable somehow, like identify complexes and yeah. whether it's supplement the maintenance fees or help upkeep the grounds that there's gotta be some way to, yeah. to make this work because if that's what, I mean, they're gonna have to make it work if that's what they do. I mean, it's not just gonna happen yeah. on its own, I mean, right? It just. There, what's an example? And and I know like someone was talking about, you know, some wet West Maui complexes that they're like, you know, Papa Kea. Yeah. Uh, Ahana Outrigger, Napili yeah, yeah, yeah. Shores. Like, you don't, do you see those places being affordable? It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. I mean, that's, um, some of those Napili complexes, man, the maintenance fees there are just, they're out of control. They're like, yeah. you know, north of two grand a month for freaking yeah. one bedroom. It's just. And then on the flip side, you know, tourism being our biggest yeah. area for job availability. Yeah. Um, if we get rid of a huge chunk of the employment for local citizens, where are they going to work? You know, True. where, where are they going to go work? If all these complexes, which have a lot of staff for maintenance and other areas, right. Um, how, how are those people going to find jobs? You know, it's just, it's, you're, you're kind of, you're cutting everyone off at the knees when we're, we're, I, for this noble cause but unfortunately a lot of times when our local government tries to do something noble or they think this is the right move it ends up backfiring and we end up in a worse place economically than we were prior i'm just well, really hopeful hope that doesn't seems, happen it seems like they're you know kind of ideology is to start with the people that live here first and then try their best to take care of residents and then i guess worry about the tourism when the yeah. dust settles i don't know i mean it yeah. just which, which i think is it, it's a great it idea is, in theory it is it is a great idea but it's just it's hard to execute and still you know allow the yeah. the island to thrive economically like if it's we're a, giving up we're giving up tax revenue we're taking yeah. away jobs we're providing housing but is that housing going to be actually affordable? Yeah, where where are the people that live there going to work? It's just to afford the the housing. It just yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's service industry too, restaurants, all of it. it they all it's yeah. all the small businesses and everything are dependent on not all of them, but a lot of them are dependent on tourism. Yeah, I mean, I think it. You know, again, there is definitely certain complexes where this will pencil out. I think. Yeah. Um, how we identify those is going to be hard you know how do you pick some and not others but i mean if they just set up a simple financial criteria and you analyze each property you'll find certain ones where the operating costs are lower they have less amenities you know maybe the ones that have less common area no pools and spas and all the you know all the other stuff yep. um that you know it might work it might work in some of them um again and and with these designs i mean this isn't the best housing this isn't the housing our local families are looking for exactly that's a We're talking great about, point great point one bed one bath 500 square feet you know two bed 750 800 square feet with one parking stall like how you know how do you how do how do you do that? The kitchens are tiny. Like they're they're yeah. clearly the design of these condos was for you know transit use. I know they said they were for workforce housing according to Mayor Bisson, but the way they they live is not 
a, you know, a long-term lifestyle, right? Um, so, yeah, we're, uh, we're in for an interesting road ahead. Obviously, a lot of questions coming from clients. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, you know, no certainty at this point. Um, you know, one thing we should touch on is that hotel zoning, as we mentioned, yeah. um, is absolutely a certain given use of nightly, you know, vacation rentals that that zoning that will never change. Um, so we see potentially the demand for hotel zone properties um, going up. Sure. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any question there. I mean, they're, they're obviously going to be going to be rented at a higher clip as well. So nightly occupancy should go up at those properties and, you know, that's revenue will be yeah, driven. I think. I mean, yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll touch on that, but um, yeah, definitely hotel zone for all properties will are already becoming the new focus quickly. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's, uh, it'll be interesting here. If you got questions, please reach out to us. Any final thoughts, Sloan? Just stay locked in with the Villa Group. We got you. It uh, can try and be a little more consistent with with these podcasts and um, just keep people up to date the best we can. I know you said it, but we've had clients just reaching out the last couple of days, a little little fear, a little just anxiousness, and um, I think we're still in the in the fact finding and gathering stage right now. So um, yeah. Yeah, just sit tight and stay patient and keep keep renting your units while you can. And as soon as um yeah, as soon as we get indicated that um it's gonna go one way or the other, we'll we'll definitely keep you informed. Well, yeah, keep that date top of mind, uh, June twenty fifth. We'll be there. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll uh we'll 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 post that on our um on the notes. You can see the link to where that'll be and uh we'll go from there. Talk soon, Sloan. Yeah, be the man, Pat. Take care. Yep, later.